Hey guys, Norm here with Mobile Glass. Uh, today we want to give you a comprehensive guide to the driver assistance system in GMC uh, vehicles, trucks. Uh, it's almost the same for the Yukon um, and uh, the, the Chevys and, and that. They, they kind of all use generally the same system. Uh, first we want to show you from the outside and then we're going to get into the good stuff like how to use the systems and how it works, functions on the inside while driving. But if you look uh, here at the outside top center of the windshield, you'll see that forward facing camera that trapezoid area right up there. We have other videos explaining all this. So that's um, you know part of the system. That's a, a huge part of the system. Obviously there are other sensors um, built into the body of the vehicle, uh, but we're gonna pause it here and we're gonna jump on the inside. And I'll show you guys how to use that. I'll turn it on and off and, and adjust it. All right. Alrighty guys. Now we have the vehicle started. We're inside obviously and uh, upon starting, it's normally going to be turned on. Now, where um, the switch is, uh, now first of all, we're talking about multiple systems. Let, let me start with lane departure warning, right? Uh, that's the thing you're probably going to notice most when you're driving the vehicle. So the on off is right here, center console on the passenger side. You'll see the image or icon of a vehicle with the hash marks uh, side of the road. It's supposed to be, you know, the lane, the vehicle being inside the lane. So with the light on, it's on. With the light off, it's off. Now, we're gonna have to get this vehicle up to a certain speed. I think it's over 35 or 40 um, before it, it activates and starts to work. Uh, but that's how you turn it on and off, right? Just touch it, press it, depress it, and on and off and on. Very simple. Um, in addition to that, um, we also have Ford Collision Alert, which is really what uh, the Department of Transportation and uh, the National Traffic Safety Board, every, the, what they want is all these vehicles to have this Ford Collision Alert, right? Brake assist, uh, uh, city braking. There's all kinds of different um, trademark names at this point for this, but that button is gonna be on the driver's side of the steering wheel. So the left side of the steering wheel, the top inside button where it shows two cars kind of maybe in a collision. <laughs> uh, we don't want to think about that, but uh, it's got a little star. So if you hit that button, what you'll notice is a pop up on your display and you'll see collision alert. Uh, and the three lines sort of sort of looks like a almost, you know, when you have your Wi Fi, the signal um, idea. So what that is, is telling you by default, it's going to be the most highly sensitive. It has the three lines, right? Um, if you hit the button, it drops it down to two and the vehicle kind of moves closer to you or down to one and the vehicle moves even closer. So that's, uh, you're adjusting uh, the, the distance or sensitivity of the system. So uh, let's just by default, leave it at the most sensitive. Now for us to, to show you that in action, I'm gonna have to get behind someone and they're gonna have to brake and I won't brake. So I'm gonna have to get pretty close to them and those brake lights and that vehicle being in front of us is hopefully gonna stop us or slow us down uh, versus just ramming into the back of them. Do not depend on these systems. They are not 100% foolproof, which kind of makes you wonder why they're doing self-driving cars. We're definitely a good 10 years away from that technology being safe. All right, so we're gonna move ourselves now onto a highway so I can show you how the system works. So I'll catch you in a second. We're just gonna pause and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're driving. Uh, the speed limit's a little bit higher here, so you can see, okay, at 35 is where it's turning on. Um, it seems like it's got to catch the lines. Um, so if you're on a road that doesn't have uh, the white line on the left side, or if, if, if you're driving you know, in the left lane, uh, but <laughs> if you don't have the, the lines, it, it, it has a harder time activating. So you gotta see it's coming on. So if you see that green car uh, displayed in the very bottom of the dashboard uh, with the green hash lines, that's when it's turning on. Um, like I said, one thing is definitely you gotta get your speed up, which I'm speeding right now to try to get it to activate, but you also have to have, there you go. So um, let's take it on the highway so we don't have any issues and there's better lines. Um, so the good and the bad of the system is um, it, it, it does work. Um, I'm not gonna say it doesn't work, but it doesn't work very well. Um, if there's dirt on the road, if somebody stopped fast and there's a skid mark on the line, it can't read those lines, it'll stop working. So sometimes it will help you and sometimes it won't. Another thing I experienced, okay, you can see it's on now. Um, 
So let's see if we have a, a curve coming up here, right? There's no one around us. So what if I forget to turn? Well, it didn't catch, see? Um, what I notice it has to do with an angle. So if, I think it thinks you intend to cross the line if you're, um, the angle is too uh, direct it will just slightly adjust your steering if you veer off just it has to be a very slight angle um, so that's why I say it, it works but eh, if you fall asleep in a curve you're still gonna crash if you fall asleep in a straightaway and you just kind of glide off to the side it may correct your steering now um, let's see here if it will do it there it goes all right so I did it there and then it kicks us over the other side yep and it does it again so it's kind of pushing us like a ping pong ball like back and forth the way so that's in action your lane departure warning system now you need to turn this system off sometimes because I was driving down a highway about 70 miles an hour within the speed limit by the way and um, it was really windy so the wind kept blowing me over to the right and every time I got close to the line it was correcting the steering and bringing me back over to the left and it really felt like a ghost was driving it was pretty annoying because it was a constant wind blowing you over to the side and then constantly readjusting so um, it's it's really weird um, in that case you know you just hit the button turn it off good to go um, you know you can adjust the steering on your own because there's nothing worse than when you're adjusting the steering the vehicles adjusting the steering the wind is adjusting the steering uh, the curve of the road uh, it come into play it's uh, not really helpful um, so that's your lane departure warning system now um, we're gonna get on the highway here and, and hopefully there's a, a someone stopping in front of us and I can kind of show you the uh, assisted braking Ford collision alert um, you don't have to get that close when you have it at the highest uh, you know, sensitivity at the furthest um, setting but you do still have to get somewhat close to them. Um, if you're driving in the city, you're gonna have to adjust that, right? Because it's a lot of stop and go traffic and um, the system will activate a lot quicker and a lot more often. Um, so like I said, just hit that button on the steering wheel and, and change the uh, sensitivity or the distance setting and you're good to go. Um, but for most like highway driving and stuff, just, just probably leave it at the default setting so I'm trying to catch up with this traffic here and see before we hit the uh, the next light Let's see we got our lane departure working and there we go just adjusted the steering like a ghost and we're going straight again um, but yeah it was interesting the first time I tried to show somebody how this thing worked um, it didn't adjust the steering. And I realized why that some, some dirt and debris had gotten on the uh, the line uh, and kind of covered it up so it couldn't see that the road was turning. So don't depend on these things 100%. Uh, all right, here's someone braking. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna time this out right. Let me play a game with the person behind us and get behind them and see if I can get them to Certainly didn't kick in there, did it? <laughs> we'll try again here. So part of what I want to show you is not only how this works, but also why not to depend on it. Uh, I don't want to say I don't like these systems, but I don't like these systems. Uh, I, I don't like something that like eh, it kind of works, you know? Um, it doesn't really make sense to me. Assisted braking at this point at all. I nothing, nothing noticeable. And as you can see, we have it on in the highest sensitivity and nada. Um, I'm trying to figure out if it's just looking at the people in front of you or if it's looking for the red in the brake lights. 
I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I know that the time that it worked really well, it was at night, um, and the people had really bright brake lights, and it stopped way further than the distance I have in between the person in front of me now. Um, so, whether it's night or day may have a big impact, or the brightness of the brake lights in front. You would think that it's just looking at an object, but um, it does not seem like that to me. So, wondering how that lady got ran over in Arizona, uh, you can see why she didn't have a big red light. Uh, so, why even have it? That, that does come to mind, right? Like, why even have a system that just works once in a great while, really? Um, but I guess something's better than nothing. I get, I'm not sure. But give it 10 years, I think these systems will work better. At least now you know how to operate it. Um, I, I'm not an expert, I'm a layman. I guess just someone that's trying to help other people out that may not have figured any of this out. So now you know. Any questions, um, give us a call or probably call GMC. Good luck with that though. All right, thanks for watching. Mobile Class 800 557 3078.